Working on my 2007 E7 DX5. It's got a 4.8 in it. This video is regarding battery registration. Um, I figured I'd put this together before I try what I'm about to try. Had this car almost four years actually. Right after I got it, um, we needed to change the battery. Like actually when I bought it, it needed a battery. They threw a battery into it. It was alright for a few months. And then it kept dying. Found out the alternator was going. Changed out the voltage regulator because it was way cheaper. I put in a Vallejo voltage regulator. And uh, that was fine. Took care of the charging. But what I always noticed is the voltage was low. Just enough. It's actually been since I've had this car. It's kind of sucked. But um, there's my voltage just at idle. You know, this car has a lot of features and, you know, consumes a lot of power. Rear entertainment and all this stuff. But, you know, it's got the intelligent battery system that's supposed to monitor and adjust charging based on um, load, etc. I'm suspecting this car used to have a gel battery, maybe, and when I bought this car from the dealership, they just threw in a lead acid and didn't even register it. I don't know exactly. But that will go between like 14.2, maybe 14.3. When you're slowing down, as you're slowing down, it drops down into the 12s. It's all over the place. At idle, it's pretty steady. That's just enough to like barely keep the car running and barely have keep the battery happy. So what's happened is, over the years, I've changed the battery. Actually, I had an E46 that had the same type of battery. Just for the heck of it, I swapped it. And when I swapped it in, it runs great for uh, a few months actually, it'll start right up, but like that's just because the battery is been, you know, holding a good, fair charge. Um, and then after some time passes, the battery gets kind of weak. Let's just say you turn on the radio and just have, you know, you forget to turn down the interior fan without the car running. In like five minutes your battery's dead, you need a boost. So, it's like that now, you can, as long as you're a little bit conscious, and you just you know don't leave your accessories on etc you're okay but what I want to try now is getting into the battery computer the alternating charging circuit computer with DIS with my laptop I set this laptop up to run um, to run uh, INPA and DIS so I can change my injectors and change out my ABS module it's change I mean uh, change my ABS pump on my E90 I got it all set up. I want to go into the chassis control, into charging, and I want to just re-register the battery, make sure it's lead acid, clear any faults, and let's see if, if I'm sitting at idle, am I going to get a higher charge? I would expect that to be in the 14s, so that the next time I go to start the car, it's, it's got lots of juice and the battery's happy. That doesn't seem like high enough voltage to just idling along to... Um, keep your battery happy for more than a few months so that's what this video is about um, if you guys have one of these cars or pretty much any newer BMW and you just toss a battery in as it gets weak chances are it's not gonna work out you're gonna you're gonna have issues with your uh, charging circuit down the road so that's what this is about I'm gonna load up the computer I'll show you that and let's see if we can figure this out on a E70 diagnostic connector is down on the left I'm using a D and K can um, cable. You can find these on eBay, 15, 20, 30 bucks max. It's got two speed interfaces. I'm on, D, on K can high speed for this car. So, plug that into the port down here. We should get some lights on the connector, if you can see. Plug it into USB. Now this computer is set up to run DIS right now. I'm loading right into Windows. So to run DIS you need to have a diagnostic head emulator. Right there. You need to have this set up. Basically if you guys find this video helpful and you want to try to attempt this yourself, you gotta just search on Google, find the file. You know, there's plenty of people that have uploaded it. DIS version 57. Um, 
download there's a PDF in the files that walks you through setting it all up and once you set it up you can work on multiple BMWs it's not like Impo where you you have to set it up specifically for the chassis you're working on with DIS it's a huge file and you're good you can work on multiple cars so it's pretty handy if I was just doing this something like this I would gravitate toward setting up DIS so you gotta load this file it's a server communication protocol loading up the diagnostic head emulator you have to start it by hitting run I'm loading up VMware to actually start the virtual server which gets you into DIS it's a start virtual machine it's a Linux based software So basically it's just emulating what the, the, the scanner that the dealers use. Takes some time to come up, I'll probably edit out this whole loading procedure. But we gotta establish, establish a connection to the car. I really don't know where to go into so I may be playing around. I'll edit out all that and maybe I'll leave it in if I find it helpful to help guide you guys. But yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of error codes logged in the module, but if all goes well, then we should see our voltage bump up. It's not terribly hard to set this up, it's a little time consuming. You gotta dedicate your an old laptop, one Windows 7, 32 bit, and it should be pretty headache free. But, you know, if you have one of these cars, it's invaluable. It's worth, absolutely worth uh, setting it up. So we're loaded in. We're going to go over to Diagnosis. I'm going to go over to X-Series. E70. I'm going to go to this arrow down on the bottom to load in. I don't think I have a connection. Hold on. I'll have to restart this. Okay, we're back. I had to just change one small setting in my DIS. Just because I haven't used it in a while. To re-establish connection to the control head. But now I'm ready to load. Going into diagnosis. X-Series, E70. <laughs> Once you guys set up DIS, you won't, you shouldn't have any issues. You just gotta follow the PDF to a T and then it gets you connected. Right now it's going through and detecting all the features the car has. Um, what we wanna do is go into control unit functions I believe. And let's see what we have. function selection in the bottom corner should be it under body I believe I'm going to look for power management or something like that let's see what our choices are I'm learning along with you guys for this particular car You can see the cable being so well, it was blinking away a second ago. Okay. So it's asking me 
any of these apply? I do not believe so. I'm going to hit OK and leave it all no default. Power supply. Here we go. So, battery. Yeah, so here's what I'm looking for. So, let's see the evaluate battery charge state. I'm going to click on test schedule. So I'm going to do a short test on that module. Ah, it's going through everything, but it should, this will take some time. Alright. Don't have active front steering. I have that on my other car. kind of wish it, this car had it. I think it's done now, so... Control unit functions. Function selection, service function, body, power supply, battery, evaluate battery charge state, right here, and then test schedule. Alright, so you gotta shitload of codes, codes here. Operating voltage incorrect, short circuit to ground, system voltage below 7.5. Tons of stuff here. Just because whenever your uh, your battery's low, it wreaks havoc on vehicles like this. So we're going to go into this. So now it's reading data from power management system. So this is a dealer level thorough evaluation of the battery modules. The battery power management with the IBS determines the battery charge state. When at rest this takes place by measuring the closed circuit voltage. When driving this takes place by balancing the charging. See I'll give you an example here. I don't know like maybe this is how the car is but if I without just changing the battery and doing nothing else and not telling the car anything if I just rev it up a bit voltage if I let off drops way to 12 rev it up 14 all over and it tries to stable that three you know I th you know your average car the voltage regulator is more responsive than that is that part of the intelligent battery system constantly varying your voltage and thinking about everything I don't know but like it doesn't seem right so the charge status of the last five days are stored at the time spent within a range note the battery charge state cannot be determined correctly if the off load. anyway let's see what happens here the battery capacity registered is 90 amp hours. AGM batteries are identified by a black housing. Last battery replacement at reading zero. So it doesn't know if there's ever been a new battery put in here. The following codes stored in the DD DME. Exhaustive battery discharge at 185, 184 kilometers, frequency 2. Charge state of last 5 days. Charge status histogram. Let's see what happens here. Let's check out the last five days. Battery charge last determined. Current, 69% charge. That's terrible, I think. You want more than that. It's not healthy. Okay, number two. Histogram. Let's see what that means. Time when charge status in range. Hmm. So I need to register a new battery. Even though I don't have a new battery, but like, just gotta understand a little more about what's going on here. And the last option is end m test mode module, so we're gonna get out of here. So it thinks that I've never put a battery on this car. 
Register battery change. Test schedule. So let's see what the issue is then. What you want? What do you want to do? Display the history of battery replacement. Let's just double check that. Considering I've had the battery, I've swapped batteries between cars, had them in and out multiple times. If another battery capacity or battery is retrofitted, the new battery capacity is only displayed. Okay, so things I have, oh, this is this is messed up. Here you go. This is why my car charging sucks ass. It thinks I have a 90 amp hour AGM battery in there, but I truly have a 900 cranking amps lead acid battery in there. So when they sold me the car, they're like, don't worry, we're going to throw in a new battery for you. They put in an AC Delco lead acid, right? They didn't even care or, you know, it's been years of like crappy charging all this time. Um, so it, I, it thinks I have an AGM. I don't. So I gotta change that. And let's see what this does with, with with this information. I guess if you guys have just had a car like this and you just throw in another AGM, chances are you're not gonna encounter any issues. If you switch from AGM to lead acid and don't tell the car, it, it'll work, but it's not great. So let's go back to one. Register battery. I'm gonna tell it basically today. I put in a lead acid battery The battery replacement is entered in the DB the next step the engine does not have to be running and on terminal I want to keep it running because if I leave my key on for five minutes, I'm gonna to have to charge my battery current battery is AGM One enter battery replacement same capacity Enter battery replacement, higher or lower. Enter battery replacement, change from normal lead acid, white housing to... So I have to do option three here. Installation of a higher or lower capacity battery or change from a normal lead acid battery with white housing to AGM battery must be registered in the vehicle. The alternator can charge the battery correctly only if the correct battery replacement is stored. Perform the following retrofit program. After retrofitting, run a terminal change. Only then can a new battery capacity be displayed correctly. The battery replacement is entered into these way. Battery could not be replaced. Problem caused. No communication with IBS or engine electronics pa status cannot save battery. Terminal 15 was not switched on. Engine running. Okay, so I can't have the car on. We're going to... Turn off the fan, shut the car off. Key on. Try again. By the way, there's that's what my battery floats at after being running for a while. That's not great. Let's try again. I don't think I lost communication to the vehicle just by turning it off and on. So option three to change. Hopefully it responds now or just key on. To register the new battery size or the other battery type, now carry out the retrofit program in the battery. Let's hope this works. Let's see if it knows now that I have lead acid. It d didn't seem that straightforward.
Okay, so it knows I changed the battery. It thinks I changed the battery, but I want to tell it that I have an lead acid instead of... Um, so it says battery capacity, last battery replacement at pretty much the same... It rounded down. But it still thinks I got a 90 amp hour AGM. I got to change that. So let's go to option 3 and... Let's see what I missed. Okay, I'm going to try something a little different. I just checked the capacity of my lead acid battery in there. It's an AC Delco. And it's 130 resting current RC. So that should be 130 amp hours. Let's see. I'm sure there isn't an AGM battery that has that capacity. So let's see what we can figure out here. I'm going to shut off the car. Battery. Alright, we're back. I'm going to now encode the car through NCS Expert to tell it that it now has an 80 amp hour lead acid battery versus a 90 amp hour AGM battery. So I'm loading up NCS Expert now. I had to load some Dayton files specific to the E70 because I had it set up to work with my E90 but that's pretty straightforward. I'll link to a thread for setting up uh, NCS Expert and IMPA and all that. So first thing we're going to do is load a profile. I'm going to load this. NCS Expert profile. We're going to hit F1 for VIN, F3 for ECU, also, and then chassis, CAS. It's going to pull data down from the car. We're going to hit back. Now I have the car in a battery charger FYI while I do this. So, now, uh, now that we hit back, we're going to hit F4 for process ECU. And we're going to look for CAS. Hit OK. Now we're going to read ECU. Close this out. Now we're going to leave this open. We're going to the work folder. An NCS expert. What we want to do is open up this file here, fsw underscore pswtrc. All right, we're going to save this as a dot man file. We're replacing an empty file that's already there. All right. So I got it open with Notepad. What we're looking for is battery. So I'm going to search this and type in B A T T E R I E, and it's going to jump down to the battery class. Right there, and you can see what's there now. 90 amp hour AGM. What I want to do is change it to 80 amp hours. Just 80 amp hours. 
and get rid of the rest. You want to be careful of the spacing here. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then, well, if you don't have underscore AGM, it just thinks you have um, a lead acid automatically. Right there. Changed it. It says 80 now. Alright. So now we're going to save this. Okay, now I have the car in a charger and the battery is going way down. So I'm not going to try to load this file I just made into the computer until after the battery gets up to charge. So I'm going to let it sit for a bit and be, I want the battery floating a little higher before I try to write to it. So I'll come back after that. Okay, we're back now. Battery's up a bit. Charge is up. So we have our manipulated file ready to load into the ECU now. We're going to hit basic functions. And we're going to select code coapi read sggeet. -E so you'll look for that. GET get fsw dash psw so we want read so coapi reading or no read forward slash sg forward slash get forward slash um, fsw psw so this one right here Happy read sg get fsw psw hit ok that pops up that's normal you hit ok now that's normal basic function ended press ok now it says job name equals sg code erin we need to change the function because we want to write the changes to the module so we're going to hit change job. I think we're good here, but I'm just being safe here. F2. And we want it to say SG Coderin. Hit OK. Now, we're going to select SG Coderin. Hit OK. Press execute job. So we're ready to code the changes in that file. If I hit execute job, it's going to take some time, and then it's, if I get no errors, we're good. So it's coding right now. Okay. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to go load up DIS to register the battery. To be sure, I actually opened up the TRC file. Um, just to see what read back out of the ECU. And now I'm getting what I wanted, 80 amp hours. Right there. Let's see if I can get that to focus. So it's, that's read back off the ECU after writing to it. So the ECU knows what's up now, but the only thing I need to do is register the battery replacement after telling it it's now 80 amp hours when I go into DIS it should actually now see um, I'm expecting it to actually understand and see 80 amp hours now that's what I wanted so what I gotta do is restart the computer it's set up to run IMPA right now to change that I have to rename these directories I'm gonna close out NCS expert I have to rename my EDI ABAS directories because one of them is meant to run IMPA, one of them is meant to run GT1 or DIS. NCS Expert runs on the e on the IMPA profile, so I'm going to rename this. Type in I N P A. Rename this. Okay. I'm going to restart the computer. 
and then I'll be ready to load GT1. I'll come back once I've loaded up GT1. I have my car boosted off of my um, other car right now. It's just running off the alternator. Keys on. I'm going to. I'm loading up GT1 DIS again after coding it through NCS Expert, and I'm gonna go into the battery section again, verify that it thinks the car has an 80 amp hour non-AGM battery. If that checks out, then I'm gonna register a new battery, and we're gonna start it up and see how it looks. If it all worked out. I had a battery charger on the car running it while I was um, reading and writing through NCS Expert but the voltage dropped to like 11 and change so that was no good and didn't want to take any chances so I should have just actually ran it off my, had it boosted off the other car all along but either way, so we're going into diagnostic no, diagnosis now. I'm not sure if this will work, I may have to try to do something. No, no communication, you're going to hit cancel. Every time you change between the EDI and BAS, you can screw things up. So we're going to go into administration. See, I got those two green bars now, so we're good to go into diagnosis. Something you gotta do, because when you switch between EDI, EDIA, BAS for INPA and NCS Expert, etc., it's different. They run different versions of EDI, BAS than DIS does. So it's gonna cause conflicts. You have to switch, and then when you switch back to DIS, you get that error. It's gonna make a test connection, and then it refreshes everything. So it senses it's connecting to the car now. I don't want to do a quick test. I believe all I'm interested in here is the CAS system, so I'm going to dis deselect all these so it doesn't take forever to actually test everything. There's other ways to, to reset, re-register a battery. It's just for me, this is going to be the easiest way. You could use Tool32, other ways to get that information entered on the ECU. But what I did read is you definitely want to um, re-register the battery after changing between types, battery types. Because that resets all the learning and charging profiles. So now I've deselected everything except the CAS. I'm going to click it again, let it do its test. This won't take very long. So now I can go to Control U to Functions. Function Selection. Look for Service. Body. It's going to load up battery here.
leave everything as it is. And then we're going to go to power supply, battery, register battery change. And then we're going to click test schedule. And say yes. Now we're looking for it to tell me there's an 80 amp hour battery installed. So I want to register a battery replacement number two. Boom, current register capacity 80 amp hours. So we're gonna enter a battery replacement at the same capacity. So it's doing it. Successfully registered in the DME. The following is now entered in last battery replacement so we're good now I'm gonna take the car off of my charger on the other car start her up and see what happens okay so I just started up the car it's running off of the new charge profile um, I had it boosted and running off my other car for quite a while so let's just see let's let it settle out and see where, what difference this makes overall Raising up the RPMs. You know what? It doesn't drop now. That's a huge difference. I don't get fluctuation like crazy going all the way down into the 12 6s, 12 4s. <clears throat> it's a much more steady charge. It doesn't really go up very high. I guess it considers that enough under the current state of the battery but I'm gonna let this idle for a while and then I'll give you a final update okay so it's been idling for about 10 minutes definitely knows it has a lead acid 80 amp hour battery now battery must have come up to proper floating voltage by now it was completely flat not too long ago so what I noticed the biggest difference is my total voltage hasn't really changed but what I do notice is when I'm just revving it up smoothly letting it off stays in the 13s biggest difference I've noticed after letting it idle for a while is that the total voltage isn't really increased very much but what I do notice is um, when I'm just revving it up and like letting off if I rev up smoothly and let it come down just like you would in normal driving it doesn't drop into the 12s like it used to so therefore ah, deaccelerating you're not going to be hovering like normally when you'd be slowing down the whole time you're slowing down um, you're in the 12s and then the, a lot of that back and forth probably caused the battery to you know barely be able to keep a healthy charge I don't know if on the back end it's putting more amps to the battery or what but voltage wise I'm maintaining a more steady voltage just giving a gas letting off you know, I had to do that very lightly. Normally, I, if I did that, I would have been in like the 12 fours. So, I'll report back after, you know, I don't think there's any need to. That's just what you need to do if you want to change out your battery type. I mean, I'll give an update video down the road to see if it improved anything. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.